This is the Bates numbering machine patented in 1901 by Edwin G. Bates. This particular one was probably made in the 1940s or so. It's a big stamp that you can stamp. It has consecutive, repeat, duplicate, standard movement. On the back it has a serial number, six wheels, style E. The normal setting is consecutive mode. When you hit it, it stamps a number. Then the next time you hit it, it stamps the next number. They went and did it. The Bates numbering machine was invented by Edwin G. Bates. He created a company called the Bates Manufacturing Company and they started making this thing in the 1890s. Quickly became super popular with lawyers or anyone else who needed to handle large collections of official documents. Legal documents, you know, they come in big batches, like with several different types of documents collected into one big pile. But you want a consistent numbering system for all the pages, even if some of the pages maybe already have their own page numbers. So you just go through the whole thing with a Bates stamp, and you've got an easily identifiable number for each page that's consistent across the whole batch. The general strategy is still used for collections of legal documents today. Nowadays, Bates numbering is a built-in feature of PDF software, and they even call it Bates numbering. This is a case of a company failing to legally protect its own brand name to the point where it becomes sort of a de facto public domain phrase. This is ironic in the case of Bates, considering the somewhat absurd early history of the company I'm about to tell you about. More on that later. Unfortunately, my stamp's ink is totally dried out. The ink pad is in here. It's probably the original one. Use Bates ink only. Hey, look at that. I have the original box, although it's in pretty bad shape. I also got an original little flyer about other models you can buy. The box is loaded with text. It's got cute instructions on how to use it. Do not strike upon a plunger. And also how to oil the mechanism. Oil working parts occasionally using refined or three-in-one oil. Use a broom splint to convey the oil from the bottle to the parts. Well, I'm all out of broom splints, but lucky for me, somebody is still making official Bates stamp ink, and you can buy it online, just like the one on the box. You can buy the whole bottle or just swap out the dry pad for a new inked one. Over here for $8, they got ready inked pads, so I decided to go for that. All those pads in the picture for just eight bones. But look what I got when it came in the mail. One. They got that picture there, but you only get one. I know it says that in the fine print, but come on, guys. I decided to leave a review explaining that for eight bones, you only get one. All right, let's see if we can do this. I only got one of these, so let's do it right. Pull that one out. Put the new one in. Hey, hey, we're in business now. This thing has three settings on the front that you can choose with the little indicator here. Consecutive is like the normal mode where each time you stamp it, it advances the number by one. Repeat just makes it stamp the same number over and over again. And duplicate makes each number stamp twice before advancing. This way you could have like two identical piles of documents and just bam, bam. It's hard to really find any information about the inventor Edwin Bates these days, but I did learn a ridiculous and confusing story about his company. You ready for this? Pay attention because this is a little complicated. In 1890, Edwin Bates founded the Bates Manufacturing Company, and that company made a product called the Bates Numbering Machine. You with me so far? The Bates Manufacturing Company makes the Bates Numbering Machine. All right? Let's proceed. Within five years, Edwin Bates had some kind of massive falling out with his own company, and he left. He totally cashed out. So by 1895, Edwin Bates is gone. He doesn't own the company anymore, or the patents, or the trademarks, nothing. But without him, the Bates Manufacturing Company was still in business, making the Bates numbering machine. Then, in 1899, Edwin Bates starts a new company called the Bates Numbering Machine Company, and they make a knockoff stamp called Model 49. And they advertise and they sell this thing as the Bates Numbering Machine Company Model 49. This would be like if I started a company called the iPhone Company, and my first and only product was called 14. And then, like, I would put out ads that say, Come and buy my 
iPhone 14. Well, iPhone is not the name of what I'm selling. iPhone is the name of my company. What I'm selling is called 14. Oh, Edwin, it's a brilliant scheme that couldn't possibly get shut down immediately. Of course, the old Bates Manufacturing Company said, hey, you can't sell a machine called the Bates Numbering Machine Model whatever because we own the trademark to the Bates Numbering Machine. And Edwin Bates says, no, 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 that's the name of my company. That's not the name of the product. Bates Numbering Machine is the company name. The product name is Model 49. It's not the same. Bates Manufacturing Company more or less immediately sued Edwin Bates for this whole stupid idea. And Edwin Bates was forced to change his new company's name to the Roberts Numbering Machine Company. Eh? And here ends the story of the Bates Manufacturing Company, makers of the Bates Numbering Machine, and the Bates Numbering Machine Company, makers of Bates Numbering Machine Company Model 49. The Roberts Numbering Machine Company actually remained a strong competitor for many decades, and the Bates Manufacturing Company still exists in some form today. In the 1990s, it was acquired by the General Binding Corporation, which also owns the Mead and Five Star paper brands. And my Bates Numbering Machine seems to still work perfectly. I can number the pages in my research notebook here. The thing is a little slow on the upswing. This is when the counting mechanism is actually engaging, and I think it could just use a little lubrication after all these years. So sometimes I gotta help it out a little. The only design limitation on the Bates numbering machine is there's no way to easily reset the counter to zero. You wanna reset the number every time you use it, so you start at zero, but there's no button or anything to zero it out. It says here on the box, you gotta lock the stamp down and then move figures with the wooden stylo. So I guess it came with a wooden stylo. Too bad you can't just use a broom splint. Mine has six digits. This was the most common model called the standard movement model. There were other ones that stamped the date along with the number or all kinds of different numbering and dating styles. There was one with a lever on it. On this one, the number never advances itself automatically. You gotta push the little lever every time. This would be good if you have a lot of parallel stacks of documents. Like if you had five identical stacks to stamp, you stamp each one and then you advance the number after five. Here's the platform model. This is just a little mount that you can screw the stamp into and use it in place on your desk. The Bates Manufacturing Company made some other stuff too over the years. You know, just a week ago, I randomly found this thing at a yard sale. The Bates Designer List Finder. Or I guess Bates List Finder Designer? Eh? Made in Hong Kong for the Bates Manufacturing Company, right on. It's an alphabetically organized notepad with a slidey thing here that opens up to the right page for you. I always thought these were cute when I was a kid. And I think I would have loved the Bates numbering machine when I was a kid too. You know, kids love stamps, right? Especially one with this kind of action. The number goes up. That's what numbers do.